In our last segment, Stephanie reported on the current whooping cough increase in the country. This next story is also the result of a multi-state alert recently issued by the Centers for Disease Control regarding another health issue on the increase here in Southern Nevada. Often when people hear the word salmonella, they think of germs associated with food, and that is true. Improper food handling can lead to salmonella contamination. But there's another way salmonella germs can make you ill, and that's by improperly handling or caring for reptiles and amphibians. Now this doesn't mean you shouldn't have these types of animals as pets. No, not at all. But some special guidelines are out there you'll need to incorporate into your household if snakes and frogs are your roommates. Like just about everything when it comes to disease prevention, knowledge and education go a long way toward making wise decisions when it comes to your family's safety and the safety of the animal. Believe it or not, a lot of the times Half of my job is to steer people away to finding the right animal. And reptiles make perfect pets for people that aren't home all the time. Also, you know, they got to consider these things do live. The turtle should live like 50 years. And iguanas should live like 20 years. But they don't see that. They don't ever get that. Also, iguanas get like six, seven feet. You know, ask themselves what type of size, you know, can they handle of a reptile? Um, can they handle the feeding schedule? Do they have the time to clean out this tank? Because honestly, these tanks are a lot of work. Turtles, frogs, snakes, and lizards are all popular pets and are well suited to many people's lifestyles. They're colorful, quiet, interesting, and often live very long lives. But get this, virtually all healthy reptiles and amphibians carry salmonella on their skin. Now, this also means salmonella thrives in their aquariums or cages, their water, and every surface they come in contact with. People don't know the danger that's presented because the animals don't look sick. So they, they're very small, they're cute, they buy them, take them as pets, they're inexpensive, and their kids love them. You know, I explained to them, sticking their hands in a turtle tank is exactly like sticking their hands in an unflushed toilet. It's pretty, it's a, it's a dirty environment. And even if the water's crystal clear, it still has salmonella in it. They shed salmonella in their feces, and they, you know, there's over 500 types of salmonella and they carry a lot of them. This becomes a very real disease threat to humans if pet owners don't observe some very stringent practices. Wash your hands every time you've handled a reptile or amphibian, whether it's a pet or found out in the wild. Don't clean their tanks or cages inside your home and never in the kitchen where food is prepared. If you have to bathe them or empty their water inside the house, use the bathtub and then thoroughly disinfect it with bleach when you're done. Don't let the animals roam freely in the house. Every surface they come in contact with will be infected, and most animal experts agree that roaming practice isn't healthy for the animals either. Wash any clothing that has come in contact with these types of animals, and most important, consider the human residents of your home before you make the commitment to choose a reptile or amphibian as a family pet. Now that last point is a really important one. We are not in any way suggesting these animals shouldn't be kept as pets in the right home settings. What we are saying is some homes are better suited than others. I always tell them if, they're, if they want an animal to roam their house, look for another animal. Don't buy a reptile. Reptiles are not for that. You know, they're supposed to be kept in a, in a controlled environment. We're creating pretty much a little pond here and we want to keep it inside of there and that's where it's going to stay. I don't recommend people to play with their turtles like their race cars or Hot Wheels or something. I don't want them to be playing with their iguanas walking around the house. For one, that's not the proper way of caring for one. Yeah, they, some of them do well for that, but they, sh they don't live their proper lifespan in that, in that manner. They should be kept in a controlled environment. Turtles and tortoises and iguanas and all, should not run the house. That's just spreading salmonella around your house. Some persons, I estimate about 2% of individuals with salmonellosis uh, can get an extra intestinal infection, meaning it leaves the intestines and gets into the bloodstream, or it can localize into an, a joint it can even localize around the heart valves. The best thing to do is always assume that they have it. Take the proper precautions in washing your hands. Don't, don't clean the turtle's tank inside of your kitchen sink where it's the same place you clean your baby's bottle. You know, don't do that. You should get proper cleaning areas, proper soaking containers and everything that's not your bathroom, bathtub, not your bathroom sink or your kitchen sink. You shouldn't use any of those. Don't, don't use the same scrubs you use to clean your dishes or the brushes, nothing. The CDC does not recommend these types of pets be kept in a home with children under the age of five. Little ones are much more likely to forget to wash their hands every time they touch the animal, and they often like to put their hands in their mouths. And since these are pets, children are naturally going to want to handle them. 
Homes where there are adults with other medical conditions which compromise their immune systems are also not necessarily good places to keep reptiles and amphibians. Remember, it's normal for healthy snakes and turtles, for example, to carry salmonella. But for young children or adults with compromised immune systems, contracting salmonellosis can be very serious, even fatal, if not treated quickly with antibiotics. This summer here in Clark County, we had eight reported cases directly tied to people coming in contact with turtles. Signs and symptoms of salmonella contamination can be found on our website, southernnevadahealthdistrict.org, or on the Centers for Disease Control website, cdc.gov. Since 1975, it's been illegal to sell or distribute turtles with a shell diameter of less than four inches anywhere in the United States and reputable pet stores follow that law. Unfortunately, smaller turtles can often be found at swap meets, as prizes at event concession stands, from street vendors, or for sale on the internet, a practice that's not only illegal, but could present a real health risk, especially to young children. The main reason they made the four inch law was just to kind of discourage the sale of a turtle. You know, a smaller turtle's gonna sell 10 times as fast as a four inch turtle. You also can't fit like a baby uh, four-inch turtle in your mouth. You know, you couldn't run around with that in your pocket very easily. And so, while reptiles and amphibians may be perfect pets for adults who take the time to care for them by making the commitment to both the animal's welfare and to human health and safety, we urge you to consider whether these pets are suitable for your particular household. And if you have one of these pets and your circumstances have changed, say by the addition of a newborn, many of the specialized pet stores in the valley will take in the animal and find it a more suitable home. Unwanted animals released into the wild generally won't survive, or if they do, they could damage our fragile desert ecosystem. We really, really discourage people trying to release them into, say, Floyd Land Park, Lake Mead, their friend's pond. But if they want to get rid of them, they can always bring them here. We can, we can always house a turtle, we can always take them in and find them the proper home. We try not to ha have them feel like they're gonna buy this turtle and bring it back to us when it's this big. We don't want it to be like they're um, trading us turtles and we're buying and selling and trading like it's a video game store. We don't want it to be like that. You know, we want them to have this animal through its, for its whole life. It's one of those things that can work out well for both man and beast with just a little bit of research and education. More information can be found on the CDC's website, cdc.gov.